Hey Flosstube, it's Lee here from Creatively. On Sunday the 29th of May with Flosstube number 127. Hopefully back to my usual self. Um, bit of a slow start today, talk about that later. But yeah, I'm feeling a bit more myself and survived that first full week at work, which was a bit of a shock, especially since suddenly it got cold. Um, I made it back into the office one day. I tried to go more days, but so Tuesday I trained, trained in. Yeah, Tuesday I trained in and it was fine. I mean, long day, by the time I got home and had dinner, I was just like, not stitching, I'm gonna stare at the TV for an hour like a zombie, and then go to bed, which is what I did. Wednesday, got up, down the train station, it was five degrees C, freaking cold, it was so cold. Um, like, winter's here, <laughs> and the train didn't come, and people were waiting. I waited for about 45 minutes, and the all the online notifications were like, the train's been delayed, nine minutes. And I was like, no, you're 45 minutes late. So anyway, um... I decided that I'd rather go home and just start work than wait for a train that may or may not turn up, which, you know, by the time the train arrives, it's like an hour before I get to work. And it's 42, 45 minutes to get into Wellington, then I've got to walk to my office. So I just went home. Um, just as I went home, the train went north, <laughs> which was the, you know, eight o'clock train went north at 10 to 9, so it's fine, I decided to work from home and someone else, another colleague said they took two and a half hours to get to work on what was usually a, typically an hour commute, so there had been some medical event, so the trains had had to stop while I guess an ambulance was called or somebody was seen to, like things happen right, but anyway, and then I didn't want to go in on Thursday, so I decided to work from home on Thursday as well. <laughs> and Friday is my normal working from home day. So yeah, I made it in on the train one day. <laughs> Let's go for two this week and see how we go. Um, Dad still went okay. In fact, he sort of suddenly, he said he woke up on Sunday last week and just felt more himself, which is really cool. Except then he went and did something and made his his left shoulder has been hanging on by a thread literally like one tendon or one ligament I don't really know the difference between tendon and ligament um and then he lifted some groceries up onto the bench and felt it rip and now it's he can't anyway he's falling apart luckily held together by his skin suit um he's got a whole number he's gonna he's got a few appointments regarding that he needs a shoulder replacement but because of his heart, putting him under is a risk, under a general anaesthetic. And you know, the last general anaesthetic he had, which was for his um, bypass, etc., he kind of didn't wake up from very well. He, he had some seizures and shit. So, I don't know, he's in pain. It's, he's in pain and it's useless and he's left-handed, so. We'll see what happens, but he's in pretty good spirits. Um, he did ring me this morning to say he was had a terrible night with cramps, so he'd been up all night, so he was just gonna stay in bed in the morning and just rest, and I said, well, that sounds like a very good thing. I didn't tell him that I was still in bed <laughs> resting either, but the reason that I was in bed at eight o'clock, 8.30 this morning was um, I went to the Wellington Food Show with my friend Sarah yesterday and it was sort of a belated birthday outing for her. Um, like I bought us tickets and stuff and we got there just after 10 and I got back to the train station about 2 and we had spent most of, a good part of 3 hours um, sampling the fine wares that were on sale at the food show which included a lot of gin and a lot of wine and some port and some beer and some cocktails and some cocktail mixes and some liqueurs and the occasional piece of tiny tiny square of cheese or bread dipped in olive oil you know tiny little 
tasters. Let's just say we didn't really eat enough for the amount of alcohol we were consuming. Um, then we did the whole like walk around one time to do all the samplings and stuff and then whip back around and make decisions about what we wanted to buy because certainly if I'd bought everything that I sampled and liked I probably could have spent about $1,200. I didn't spend $1,200. I was probably not as frugal as I should have been but we had such a lovely time. Um, yeah, bought, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a foodie. You can probably tell, I quite like my tucker. Um, so I bought, um, bought some, I bought some olive oil, like a kind of rarer um, olive type. So something you don't buy in the supermarket really. And I bought some, um, I can't remember what they're called, mojito cans of mojito, which is quite nice for a little fancy little drink. I bought some hot sauce, some gin, some tea towels, some cheese jalapeno kranskis, which I had for dinner last night with Cole Cannon. I made Cole Cannon, it was delicious. Um, I thought I'd show you, um, I'm just gonna put an insert of a couple of the photos that I, here's the, that here, that um, some of the things that I bought. So some drinky stuff, only one bottle of wine and one bottle of gin. Um, and I also got some foodie things and some tea, some, some nice fancy tea towels to try. Um, and a new recyclable, not recyclable, eco-friendly dish brush thing with heads that you can swap out because I was about to Buy a new one anyway so um, my current dish brush is going to go to the laundry for floor cleaning things and then I've got the one there. Um, I thought I'd show you a couple of my favourite things that I bought. So the gin that I bought which they had on sale there was a New Zealand gin from I think up the coast, yeah it's from the Kapiti Coast so local. It's called Tinere Mana which um, but basically it's a lemon gin and um, it was quite nice, um, you know, we, I sipped the sample neat and then I sometimes got a bit of tonic put in. I didn't like this with tonic, I think I would like it, like the tonic made it a bit bitter, which tonic is bitter, that's part of the flavour profile, but with this I think it would be really nice with soda and a splash of, uh, and a lemon wedge or something. So this would be nice in summer, but they had it reduced to $65 instead of it retails at $85. So it was really nice. Um, it's, yeah, as they say, a celebration of summer in a bottle. So I'll put that in the cupboard and have that in summer with friends. Um, and then I also got a hot sauce, which is also local from Paikakariki. Um, uh, their brand is Apostle Hot Sauce. And they had about six or seven, I think six varieties of hot sauce. And they're less about being fiery and more around having flavour. So, and their brand is Apostle Hot Sauce. And I asked the guy about it, he said, oh, it's just, you know, a bit of a family joke with, they're very, you know, brought up Catholic. And he had two, what did he say his name was? Something Bartholomew. Um, Matthew Bartholomew, I think. So he said, I've got two names. <laughs> um, and all of them are named after saints. This one's St. Peter. And it's the kiwi fruit and kawakawa verde. So it's a, it's a green hot sauce with local ingredients. So kiwi fruit's very kiwi. And, uh, and kawakawa is a native herb. Um, and they're just really cool packaging and stuff so I bought that um, and they recommend it oh, and they also have these cool little cards so these little they sort of like the idea of them being kind of a tarot looking but with these saints and then they had a little recipe so they recommend this one they're using this sauce on like fish tacos and stuff so that's kind of cool and then the third thing I'm going to show you that I thought was really cool I think another local where are they from Shoot, I can't remember. Um, I think Auckland somewhere. But um, they had a whole lot of uh, Nudolf black, black garlic. They had a whole lot of black garlic products, which if you're an Ottolinghi fan like I am, you're Tim Ottolinghi. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, this was a, a sea salt with black garlic in it and you just use this for finishing, you know, 
a little bit on your eggs or whatever and come with a little little spoon but I don't know just a little treat um, they sell a couple of their products at a local food kind of um, cash and carry I guess a food lovers paradise called more Wilson's but they don't more Wilson's doesn't stock this product so anyway I grabbed it all of these things they can buy online but anyway that was kind of the three kind of cool new to me things that um, will be fun to play with anyway this is a cross stitch channel but I know the people who follow me my subscribers I think my subscribers appreciate that I'm more than just the cross stitch <laughs> I mean we all are but some channels are very much cross stitch right and I'm like life and oh, I also got a couple of some bottles of the so Bundaberg's an Australian brand it's just up the road from my sister as in like a two-hour drive but um, the their um, creaming soda is really delicious I don't drink a lot of soda but if I am gonna drink a soda I'm gonna get a fancy soda so they just had like a sale on there like a six pack for mixed you could just pick whichever flavors you wanted and then a little thing anyway so this is as I said a cross stitch channel so at you know 11 minutes let's talk about a little bit of cross stitch I did get a few things in this week uh, there's actually only one parcel but from two two you know um, subscriptions because um, Catherine from Country Stitch um, who is I do my rainbow club fabric club through um, she also is the New Zealand intermediary for um, getting the silks for you floss clubs out so um, a couple of months ago I just sent Catherine a kind of a here's four fat quarters for the next four months just you pick which one you do each month so it's a little bit of a surprise even though I know what the colors are gonna be I don't know when they're coming and also here is 40 weeks I think it's they're all weeks dye works threads that I need for some projects so again just send me 10 each month which she's doing um, she's packaged them up Lee for May so here's my May order um, so I'm just building up some neutrals just because you never can have enough. So um, this is 40 count Newcastle and parchment. I've had parchment before, but I think I had it in 36 count. So it's a 40 count and I have actually already cut into this to kit something up. So I'm not gonna open it because it's got a great big <coughs> out of it. Um, but yeah, so just a nice, a nice neutral. Some lovely weeks. Uh, so with the um, Rosewood Manor, Sunset and Sunrise, you need more than one skein of a lot of colors. Um, so I've got five skeins of sun, of ugh, five skeins of Sally Sunshine here. Two skeins are gonna be for Sunset and the rest of them are for Sunrise. But yeah, five skeins. And then I've got three skeins of Daylily it's a lovely color uh, and two skeins of sockeye they are for um, sunrise and I think there's another skein of sockeye will be in the next well, one of the other months because I only asked you to send me 10 and that would make 11 so but they're very pretty sunrisey colors um, so that was from Country Stitch Catherine, countrystitch.com, their bricks are lovely, um, and in case you don't realise, um, Catherine, um, if you're looking for a small cut of a fancy dyed fabric, Catherine will do fat eights, and she'll also do small cuts, um, which I guess would be like a fat sixteenth. Uh, and also, you know, you can ask her to do you a custom cut of linen, um, Ada, and either dyed or plain. So, you know, reach out to her um, if you want something particular, and especially when you might want something quite bold for a small project, you don't have to commit to a fat quarter. So a lot of 
the overseas dyers, the smallest you can buy is a fat quarter and you're kind of stuck with a quarter or an eighth. Sorry, not an eighth. A quarter or a half or a full yard, right? Um, which is expensive, especially if you're wanting something like, I don't know, a boysenberry coloured fabric for something little. Personally, I'm like, I'm unlikely to stitch a large thing on a boysenberry fabric. Anyway, that's, that's a bit of that. Catherine also sent us a little sample of 40 count Verdal to try. Um, Verdal is a 100% cotton, cotton even weave. I think she recently got some in um, due to customer requests. I will give it a go for something. I do stitch a little bit on even weave. Um, I particularly like a, if a project like a mandala that's very symmetrical, I'm likely to choose an even weave. Um, the odd project, I mean, I stitched three Teresa Wenslers on Lugana, so 25 count Lugana. So I will. I will use an even weave, I just love linen, so. But I'll give it a go on something, I'll find something little to stitch up on that. Um, but yes, if you're, again, if you're looking for Verdal, and I'm sure she'll give it a go dyeing it as well, let um, Catherine at Country Stitch know you're interested. So yeah, it's kind of new into her range. Then I've got my two Silks For You Club um, come in, clubs come in. So first of all, we've got the uh, Silk, sorry, Colours of the Month, which is the 4 by 15 metre skeins of, from the standard range. And they are rich berry colours this month. Uh, so we've got PR110, PR065, a couple of highly variegated ones, PR148, and they are different. One's got a brighter pink and one's got more teal, um, PR156, so they're very pretty. And then the silks of the month, which are the five 10 meter skeins that are custom dyed one-off dyes for the club and that this month they are uh, so this is for April I should say um, or is a month behind with them so they are number one through five for April 2022 and just some lovely berry colors these are very similar but this one is slightly darker so it'll be a nice fade if you wanted a fade. So I like those. I like those shades of pink. Those rosy sort of berry coloured pinks. So that's everything new. I don't think I bought anything. I don't think I bought any charts. I might have bought some. Oh, I did buy a chart, but I haven't got it yet. So I bought a PDF from the Yankee Stitcher. It's a, it's a cool sampler. It looks like a traditional sampler, but it's got a kind of sake say, like a second glance kind of thing, but I haven't got the PDF yet and the payments is still showing as pending on my card. So I think it wasn't one of those, um, like it didn't use PayPal or Apple Pay or anything like that. It was a online shop widget that I had to put my credit card details into and I, it looks like my, either there are delays to processing or they, put a hold on processes, I'm not really sure, but anyway, when I finally get the PDF, I'll let you know. Um, what did I stitch on? So I had my new start, which was starting at the 19 of 50 for my 50 at 50 starts for my 50th birthday. So that was Cat Lovers uh, by Jardin Privé, which I am stitching on 36 count cream and sugar linen from Fibre on a Whim and doing a three-quarter conversion as in there are eight colors and I changed six of them. I started this on 22nd of May, so last Sunday, and that's what the chart looks like, and it's, I just changed the colors to slightly, I guess, springier colors, maybe? Where is it? Ah. And I got all of the bottom, kind of the bottom row done. 
I quite like my colours. They're yeah, a little bit fresher, slightly different. But so the cat and the beigey kind of basket colours are called for, and the others are all converted. So yeah, that's real good. So yeah, that's the bottom of it. And I guess I'm about one, two, three, four, maybe a fifth done. Yeah. That's a good start, I think. So that was start number 19. So I'd stitched on that for a few days, maybe three days. It's funny because I feel very pink and splotchy. Um, a couple, my friend um, Sarah shared a picture of us from at the show. Like we we're really good. We wore our masks all the time. It was so crowded. There were so many people not wearing masks. So, of course, you're at a food show, you're trying, you know, you should take your mask down to try the samples and stuff. But when I then I then would put it back up and talk to the person behind the counter, and you're really bunched in. There were thousands of people there. It was absolutely, absolutely chocolate block with people, you know, going around the, the um, Westpac Stadium. No, it's not Westpac anymore, is it? The Sky Stadium in Wellington. Um, and... But anyway, we sort of stopped at a certain point where we had a bit of room around us and um, Sarah did a selfie, which she posted on the Instagram and all that because she's much better than me. She's younger, so she knows what she's doing. And um, a couple of people have commented saying, how <laughs> good I look. I'm just like going, I'm not sure whether she used a filter or not. There's no filter mentioned in the story or, or whatever. Um, but I mean, makeup, good lighting, several gins, you know, several drinks under my belt, um, good angle, <laughs> I don't know, but um, yeah, I don't feel quite so glamorous today, but I did have makeup on, and again, was quite merry from <laughs> the festivities, um, what was I doing, oh yeah, was stitching, <laughs> okay, and then I decided, oh, I was inspired by Margaret, <sighs> what's your bloody Instagram name? Oh, yeah, mm, 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 something about Yoda. <laughs> I'm like, Margaret, I who she is. I'm terrible. I should write stuff down, but because I'm terrible with nouns, so I forget names. I just, I have a, I have a noun thing. Um, so she finished. She finished her 2020 pandemic sample by Sassy Girl, and it looks really stunning, and her colours are different. But I think she used a Mississauga silk conversion and the, the orange is a bit yellower. The fabric's different, of course. I'm not sure how, like quite a few of the colors, like the blue, the this blue in here is brighter in the conversion, the Mississauga conversion. So I love how different piece, the same piece can be just with some minor changes, you know, it's like different floss, different fabric, tweaks here and there. And it's, I think it's really cool. But, you know, if you, well, you can't stitch it exactly like this model, right? Because, so Christy, Christy hand dyed her own fabric during the pandemic. It's the, part of the reason why the sampler came about is she had to work with her stash and she had some dye and she gave her fabric a good going over. What did she say she used? A bit of dark green, this is Rit. Some dark green, some charcoal, some sunshine orange. Um, then baked it and what have you. So, um, and then she added some tea. <laughs> then she added some tea to it. So, um, she really did a whole witch's brew on this fabric. So, you can't stitch the model because the, you wouldn't never be able to get the fabric the same, right? So, I think that's really cool. But anyway, so, Margaret finished this. And... I decided I needed to pick it up because I hadn't stitched on it for a little while and I got the bottom third done. So here I am. Where I was at, I had the border. Uh, okay, I had the border done to about here um, and I had stitched everything from the squirrel this way so basically this week i picked it up and picked up the border and got all that border done 
in that you know these all of this corner here um, and filled in the bunnies insides because I'd missed that last time I hadn't done the inside stitches yet and then also noticed that their eyes were supposed to have black dots in them so I did that as well but anyway that's basically a third done so I'm now up to the row of the houses which is quite exciting because when one is just sitting watching a movie or binge watching a TV series, stitching a big ass house is pretty quick. You know, you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like once you get the windows in, they'll probably put the windows and the door in. Um, I don't know, I might not do that. We'll see, it doesn't really matter. But those houses are pretty simple houses. They're big ass houses. But anyway, again, I've said it before, I'm so happy I changed my fabric to start this because this um, 40 count prehistoric by Fox and Rabbit, I just love this fabric so much. And yeah, partial conversion because I'm using three, I'm using three um, Victoria Motto Sampler Shop threads, the orange, the red, and the fox colour are Victorian Motto Sampler Shop, and the white, I'm pretty sure I just pulled something that I had a couple of skeins of, um, Blanc, and I can't remember what it was called for, but it was, oh, 3866, so I'm just going to be doing it in good old fashioned white. Um, and also what I'm very excited with this fabric is I don't need, I'm going to have a really nice or well, small cut, but that's enough for a little something. I get to use this fabric on something else, um, a small, so I'm quite excited about that. So yay, that's all my stitching. I just did the two projects. Um, I don't know what I'm going to pick up for the next couple of days. Oh, so that was start number 11 of 50. So yeah. <clears throat> because my new start, my 20, 20th start of, for my 20 at 50 is going to be first day of winter. Can you believe winter? I've got my brunch light open. It's a beautiful day. It is really cool in the evenings and the mornings, but it's still really lovely during the day. So, you know, doors and windows open. I'm wearing long sleeves. Did you notice? I'm so hot. This is like one layer because I don't wear... <laughs> I don't like clothes. I don't like that. I hate things around my neck. This isn't even tight and I feel like I'm strangled with it. And I hate things around my wrists. I must have been like chained up in a past life because I hate anything around my wrists. I don't like, I never wear a polo neck. <gasps> my school uniform when I was at intermediate school. And I think even when I went to high school, the first year, the winter uniforms were woolen skirts allergic to wool so first of all freaking torture i mean they were lined but when you line a you line a woolen garment you still have the fabric curled under and it touches your skin and i i don't say i'm allergic it's like i get it makes it gives me eczema like my skin's i'm very sensitive i'm a princess i was joked that i would have been the princess in the pee i would have felt that freaking pee through 20 mattresses um I'm a bit I'm a special girl um so the skirt would be like but the winter uniform was this woolen skirt and a woolen jacket a woolen um jumper like a woolen yeah 100% New Zealand wool jersey jumper sweater what do you call them and yeah a, a jew we call them a jersey um with a polo neck um i guess stretch cotton polo oh my god honestly like so so first of all wool things around two layers over my wrists and something around my neck oh my god it was honestly it was like torture so i just like loose i like loose I hate things around my wrists. Anyway, I'm finding like that. I think it's past life. I don't really believe in past life, but it's fun to, fun to say it. Okay. I don't believe them at all, really. I shouldn't say really. I don't at all, but whatever. Okay. This week, 1st of June, first day of winter. Um, so what's that? Is that Wednesday? That might be a bad day. I think I've got a hair appointment that day. Oh, it doesn't really matter. We'll get a couple of stitches in. So... 
I'm going to be pulling out something I've been dying to start for so long, but I've been trying to like <laughs> eke out all the dying to start st um, stitches. So it will be the Winter Garden by the Drawn Thread. Um, so 32 count, um, this is a called for fabric, 32 count smoky pearl with all the called for silks. I went to town with this one. Um, I've got all four, so I only plan to do one this year, start one this year, and I'm so looking forward to doing all the specialty stitches and for it to be a nice horizontal piece. Um, it's yeah, this is all called cool for. Um, I've got all the silks already. I've got them all cut in, hanging on. Um, this is just where I, I, how do I? do my projects whatever I feel like and what I mean by that is I printed I copied all of the um, color thingies and the symbols and I just glued them onto scraps of scrapbooking cardboard so that is um, MPI's gold and it's a you know the symbols already on the card and similarly some of them have um, on the backs, I, where there are specialty stitches, I'm, I've got them glued on as well. So I'll still have a copy of the actual chart with me, but it was more just a quick glance that it reminds me that some of these are more than just, um, so you know, Dinky Dyes 159 Cherry Wood, is all these specialty stitches so where the symbol appears um yeah so that's pretty exciting and i think this is just used for back stitch so there's no um bit of paper so that just yeah dinky dyes 118 iron bark so this has all these lovely threads we've got dinky dyes and mpis and i think that's all Dinky dies and MPIs, yeah. I think that a couple of the other months have some extra, some additional um, silk types, but feels nice. So I'm really looking forward to starting that. And I mean, it's a decent stitch, and I feel like. Uh, I, I might run out of some colours and have to buy more, which was a little bit annoying. It doesn't tell you that you need more than one skein, but you are using one ply unless otherwise, unless otherwise noted, and I think I can't see anywhere in this whole chart. No, the key has everything's one ply, so your silk goes quite far, right, with one ply. Um, yeah. I'm excited. So that will be my 20. That'll be tw number 20. This will be number 20. And I don't have, I don't know what bag to keep it in. So I'm keeping it in my mat bag because I don't know. That's just what's free. Um, yeah. So that's starting on the 1st. Um, so I've got what? Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, so I've got three days to do something else. Don't know what I'm going to pick up, it'll be a surprise. Next Saturday I'm going to the art show, the New Zealand art show with my um, art show buddies, as I'm calling them now, with um, Kelly and Eve. So I, I'm not going to buy, what did I buy last year? Three pieces of art or a diptych and a... But I do, I'm quite keen to get another mixed media piece to go with the one I bought last year because the wall it's on looks a bit, it needs sort of three smaller pieces. But I am not going to go crazy, but I would like to go crazy, but I won't. But so hopefully next Sunday I'll have a new piece of art to show you, which will make me excited because I do want more on my walls than just cross stitch. Speaking of which, I've got three pieces that the frame is. One of them must be due soon. Okay, um, I did get a little bit of happy mail, which was lovely. A lovely card from Zaklina. Um, she was some, she's from Dunedin, and she was um, one of the people who um, 
got one of my giveaways recently, the one of the little bags of charms, and she wrote me a lovely little card, and um, yeah, I mean, she enjoys my floss tube, so thank you, Zaklina, really appreciate it. I got, got a bit overwhelmed last week, to be fair. I was I received some of this, you know, fabric and stuff in, and my room was a bit of a mess. I'd sort of sorted stuff into piles, um, and so on Friday lunchtime, I was working from home and I decided that I needed to match some fabrics up to some projects because I had received an, you know, several pieces of fabric of late that weren't for specific projects. So I just did. I just cut into some fabrics and matched up a few projects. So I've got a few more things that are now fully kitted. Um, and I don't know, some of you, I find it much easier to go, oh, it's a fat quarter, this project needs a fat quarter, here you go, you go together, but when you go, oh, this fabric would be perfect for this project, but I only need half of it, a fat eighth, and then I'm like, but what if I can't find another project? I mostly have neutrals, you can always find a project. Um, I think some people get a little bit too hung up on, oh, I couldn't find the perfect fabric, it's like, most fabrics are fine, but anyway. So I'll show you the few more things going back into the box. So I'm, with these, I think I'm still at about 43 projects kitted. And I only have 30 to go for the year. But I'm going to have next year. So um, West Winds is Carriage House Samplings. I had bought some fabric from Country Stitch for this, but the colour was like bright yellow and I didn't... It's called Core 5. Of course it's going to be bright yellow. I don't want bright yellow. So I decided um, to, because I you, I kitted up another project and I ended up with quite a bit of this left over, I had enough of this 40 count Tickle the Ivory from Dames, uh, Dames of the Needle. I haven't overlocked anything, I have to get the overlocker out, but it's only going to be a wee project. Um, but I thought that was a nice colour for the colour for the cover model. And in the end, this is also going to be a full-on conversion because it's charted for NPIs and DMC conversion. But I've, I have shown these colours before, I think. But I'm doing a full-on, I think, Victorian motto. I think it's a full-on Victorian motto sampler shop conversion. Um, and it's probably... For me, when I look at the cover model, I go, it's blue, it's blues and tan. But based on the descriptions, there are mauves and greys and blue greens and stuff. So, ugh, I'm not gonna, it's no, it's really no good telling you the colours of Victorian motto because she doesn't, generally doesn't repeat them. You either got them or you didn't get them. And these were the, Floss cup Club when I briefly belonged to it. But I think it's going to be really lovely. Oh my gosh. These are the colours. I love the soft muted. I mean, I love colour. I love bright orange and I love soft muted colours. So that's going to be on that. The only one that might be a bit light might be the flax, shaded flax. However... I think that the shaded flax is only used in the windows. Um, I think it'll be okay. I can always swap it out if it's too light. But I really like that. So that is now in the box. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've pulled a lot of floss. I, I'm not going to need anywhere near that. Um, especially since I'm doing this on... 40 count, it was charted for 40 count. Um, iron a cup, like cappuccino, but um, you know, I've I'm not going to use hardly any floss for it. It's going to be like, oh, we we'll use three strands. Um, there's that one. Next one, these are all in no particular order. I sort of showed this a while ago, um. But this is Nessie, Nessie Mitchell 1929. This was charted by uh, an original sampler design by Mama Loves You GB. And I had pulled out a while ago this 
navy blue, I mean I'd stapled it to it, so it's a navy blue floss from Tom and Lily Creations. Um, it came in Ju the June 21 Floss Club and it's called Verite or Truth and I just liked the blue. And then I recently got the Tabby Cat Linen. Um, and it's the colour is the Cat's Whiskers. Just a nice grey cream, really. Um, and I'm going to do it on that. So, and it's quite interesting because I've got, the chart is from the UK, but from, I mean, um, Michelle lives in Wales. She spends her time between Wales and England. Um, the floss is from France, from Tom and Lily, and the fabric is from France. So it's a real European um, pack there. So that's going to be quite cool. I think I have to cut that yet. I think that might be too much, but that's cool. So that's another one. Quite cool to have that kitted up. I finally chose some fabric for this one. I've had this um, sitting there for a little while with the floss. Um, this chart, is, as per the little sticky that's on it, was a rack from Shan. Um, so it's one of the Abyssidarian series, but it's um, Blackbird Loose Feathers 2, My Heart's Design. Um, obviously you can do a whole series, but I'm just going to do this one as a standalone. Uh, and I finally just pulled some bloody fabric for it. I think I was dithering on the count, but I have this, again, haven't overlapped it, some Affogato by Fibre on a Whim which I think is a nice match for the cover model. And I pulled my own flosses a while ago. Um, I've got Tom and Lily, Gentle Arts, Victorian Motto, and just these, again, these muted colors that I think sort of complement or, yeah, they're not the same as, but they will suit the style of the design. They'll look fine on that, nice and a nice, neutral little sampler so that is now kitted up so excited about that that'll be another quick little one when i stitch it three more for the box so that's quite cool so i do have i think oh i have also pulled some fabrics for about four or five other charts but i don't have but i need to do the floss so either pull the dmc or kit up from stash i think they're all pretty much going to be just kitted up from stash, not from, not buying the cord for necessarily. So I feel better having done that. Like I've just, I like having some stash, but when you get too much, I'm then like, why am I buying stuff if I don't even know what I have? And I, don't know, I just like to have, I like, I buy my things to use. So even if I haven't started it, I've got a plan for it. I've kitted it up and it can change, but I kind of feel better knowing that I've cut that fabric. Um, I'll put that fabric aside. I've allocated, you know, and I'm getting these beautiful flosses and silks and things in and they're not doing any good. I don't want them just to sit around. So I am now, I do need to look for a piece of fabric. Yeah, I've got a couple of other things that I hope to get kitted up over the next couple of weeks. I'm excited about that to show you. So yeah, that's pretty much what, that's my floss tube. That's quite long because I took you on my food tour. Um, yeah, that's it really. So I appreciate you all. Thanks for coming along and listening to me waffle on about random shit. Um, and about like how I don't like things around my wrists <laughs> or around my neck. Um, but yeah, back to normal, I hope, for a little while at least. Um, looking forward to, really looking forward to getting the winter garden started. Um, I need to make some progress in some other whips. And yeah, be a surprise what I start next Sunday, because I don't know yet. Um, hmm, okay, well, that's it. I'm going to knock this one on the head, and I hope you all have a good week safe week and keep warm if you're where it's cold and keep cool if you're where it's hot 
um, enjoy, find joy in your stitching. And as always, don't let your needles rust. Ciao.